I didn't think it was possible, but Beseech the Mirror just got better thanks to Song of Creation. It's the legacy version of Tinker and Bolas' Citadel. Let's go check out the Epic Storm version 15.1. Here it is, the Epic Storm version 15.1. This actually looks quite a bit like our last version, but there's a few notable changes. One, we're not playing Ponder anymore. We've gone back to Mishra's Bobble. This is for two reasons. One, Song of Creation. We'll come back to that. The second reason is I felt like Mox Opal had never been worse when we were only playing 15 artifacts and three of them were Mox Opal. The card just was not a reliable mana source, so it felt like the worst card in the deck by far we wanted to change that so as much as i liked playing ponder i think mishra's bobble just makes more sense within the context of the epic storm that allowed us to cut the second underground sea and go back to our badlands so we're now back at the stock the epic storm mana base and that's pretty much it other than this lone song of creation so we've gone down to three chrome mocks because we have the mishra's bobble we don't need that increased metalcraft count and that opened up the spot for song of creation so what does song of creation really do for the epic storm right like why would you want to play this well it allows you situations in which your opponent has graveyard heat in order to win the game so you might be thinking why is that relevant in game one so the Mono Black Prison deck is all over Magic Online and has main deck Dothy Voidwalker on top of Leyline of the Void. And then there's decks like Lands that happens to be the third most popular deck in the metagame that has, you know, I've seen versions with main deck Endurance. I've seen versions with Crop Rotation and Bazooka Bog, Elvish Reclaimer. There's a lot of stuff going on that can stop a guy's will. And Song of Creation, it wins off very little. I mean, I've won off of a single zero drop in my hand going Song of Creation, hit two more zeros, then off to the races. You also get to play an extra land. So you don't actually need a zero. You could just have a land and a right of flame and that can get the job done. This card is so powerful. And I'm going to show you that today. It really is the legacy version of Tinker Citadel. And that's my short and sweet deck tech. We'll talk more about the list throughout the league, but I just kind of want to hop on in and play some magic. So I'll see you in the first round. Don't go anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to match number one. We are on the play. Our opponent is known for playing a lot of prison decks and black red reanimator. I'm not sure what they're playing today, but here we've opened up the Tentress of Agony, which means that this hand is sort of already a mulligan. And we have triple land drop, which I don't love. So I think I'm going to just look for something a little bit more aggressive than this slow hand. Okay, so here we have turn one galvanic relay which is interesting. Uh, if they're a prison deck, it gets a little bit awkward though. If they're a black red reanimator, we do have the Veil of Summer. We have the Song of Creation, but we can't cast it quite yet. Hmm. I think I'm going to try this. We'll bottom the Galvanic Relay. Any land off the top means that I can play Song of Creation. So between Veil of Summer and the draw step, I'm just kind of hoping to hit here. We'll play the Bloodstained Mire, and let's make them not want to Chal Zero by playing out a Lotus Petal. We'll pass the turn, holding this Mox Opal as a spell for the Song of Creation. Underground Sea, so it's not likely Prison. Grief. Okay. Well, my opening seven actually would have been good in this matchup. We're going to fetch out the Taiga, and I'm going to attempt the Veil. They have Force 2. Okay. So it looks like we're about to lose our Song of Creation. And we do. So now Grief goes to the graveyard. They have two cards left in hand. No reanimate. That's good to see. We draw a land. We'll just play that and pass. So a change you might be wondering about is that we went back to the traditional mana base with three mountains in it. We did not return to Pulverize. So there was a reason for that. It wasn't just random. And the reason is that, well... Pulverize isn't that good, and I kind of talked about it in the last video as well. Looks like they might have another piece of interaction for this Burning Wish. Long pause here. They're going to daze it. I will pay. Okay. All right, so my Burning Wish has been countered. They have a land in hand. So I talked about in the last video with Pulverize not being that great. And 
basically lands is the best prison deck in the format and they're a deck that wastelands you quite effectively so why would you want to play pulverize when instead you can just run consigned to oblivion and it doesn't answer multiple artifacts but it's so much easier to cast all right so they have one unknown we have double right of flame double force grief days what an opener wow i mean we're not out of this yet either tendrils not really a draw set that i wanted and now they play a brainstorm so our opponent's running a little hot here in game one, but I still feel like we're in decent shape. Now they cycle a Troll of Cause of Doom. They have one card in hand, and it's a Ponder. I would love to draw Galvanic Relay here. They did not shuffle on the Ponder. We'll take a draw. Lotus Petal, we will pass. Wasteland, okay. Goodbye, Taiga. And they pass the turn. We draw another land, we'll play it and pass. And step they cycle a Lorraine Revealed. Mystic Sanctuary. Okay, so they can get back like a force here. Or a ponder, but probably a force. They select the ponder actually. Okay. So they have one unknown in their hand right now, plus a force of or I'm sorry, plus a ponder on top of their deck. We draw Burning Wish. Lotus Petal. I mean, I don't know what that card is, but Empty the Warren seems decent to me. Right of Flame, Right of Flame. It would have to be like a main deck force negation here. Burning Wish, yes. Grab the Empty, play Mox Opal. And our opponent has conceded the game! Yes, love it. That was Double Force Day's Grief. Take that. All right, so now we're going to bring in Carpet of Flowers. So Alex McKinley and I have recently updated the Cyborg Guide. If you're interested in that Cyborg Guide, you can join our Patreon for it. It will be live October 1st or October 2nd, one of those two days. It's available right now for people that are in the Stormtrooper tier, which is the $25 tier. And Alex and I have been talking a lot about, do you really want to bring in Abrupt Decay in this matchup for things like Null Rod? And I'm sort of torn because I think that you might be better off just ignoring Null Rod and saying, hey, I have four Carpet of Flowers, let's win through it, rather than trying to answer the card. Because Abrupt Decay is not good against the rest of their deck. You can't really Abrupt Decay their threats. I mean, they have Grief and Troll of Cause of Doom. You don't really get to destroy their creatures, so it's kind of a terrible card. And a lot of the time, I would rather just have a Chrome Mox. And those would be the cards that we would board out for the Abrupt Decay. So... I think that this is how I want to board. I just want to have the more efficient deck. And if our opponent has an Null Rod, it's unfortunate. But it is possible for us to beat it. Okay, they've taken a Mulligan. Am I crazy for wanting to keep this hand? Against the deck with tons of discard. And if we draw Galvanic Relay, we're off to the races. Alright, judge me later. I'm keeping it. On the draw, I just think that like they have Thought, Season, Grief. And it's just kind of embarrassing to Mulligan against that where we know that the game is going to go a little bit longer. Yes, I have double Chrome Mox. I'm aware that that's not great here, but we're a deck with Song of Creation and Galvanic Relay, and I don't know, we can make use of these. We also have Brainstorm in our deck. Like, people really over-exaggerate Chrome Mox, being like, oh, that card stinks. It wasn't good in this one spot, but I think they're not seeing the whole picture. And here we see a turn one Grief. They have three cards left. They take our Right of Flame. Interesting. We'll draw for the turn. It's a Veil of Summer. How about that? We'll play Lotus Petal. And our opponent has f 6 I'm going to hang on to these Lion's Eye Diamonds for now for storm purposes. They cycle a Troll. They play Underground Sea. They have three cards in hand. Does it reanimate? It is. So Grief will come back and they'll find out that we drew Veil of Summer for turn. They have two cards in hand. They Daze. We'll pay. Okay. Veil of Summer. We drew another Veil of Summer. How wild. Okay, so they have an Underground Sea and one Unknown in hand. We draw Brainstorm. We'll just pass the turn here. Wasteland, that's pretty brutal. I mean, we know that they have an Underground Sea in hand and one Unknown. Okay. Taiga, we'll play the Taiga. Pass the turn. So now they have two Unknowns. I'll take three going down to 14. Reanimate on Troll. So they have one card here. I'm going to cycle the Veil of Summer. We just need to find a payoff. Guy's Will was not that card. Okay, so next turn they have nine damage coming in. We drew Dark Ritual. 
we have to pass. Brainstorm was a great draw for the opponent here. Because if they find Force Blue card, I'm done. They ponder, so they want to shuffle. And they did. They have one unknown card in hand, so Daze is probably the scariest thing. But I have to draw something good right now. Galvanic Relay was not something good right now, so we have lost this game. All right, game number three coming right up. That was brutal. We never drew a payoff. I mean, we drew the Galvanic Relay when it was way too late, so that's not, like, really fair, but not what we wanted to happen. We'll resubmit for game three here. All right, game three on the play. Yeah, this hand is amazing. We'll keep it. Okay, they've kept seven as well. We will lead on the Bloodstained Mire. Searches out Taiga. Let's play the carpet. Carpet resolves. It's great. We'll pass the turn. Our opponent plays a Wasteland. Pretty brutal for us. We don't have any more mana sources here. Another Burning Wish. We just have to pass. We needed that Taiga. Opponent plays a Pluted Delta. We'll take a draw. Misty is good. Play the Misty and we'll pass. Our opponent plays a Pluted Delta. Okay. They grab a basic Swamp. And they're passing. Sure. We drew the guy's will. Uh, not ideal. Part of me wonders if I should suspend that right now. I think the answer is yes. Like, I could see this game going five more turns. So we'll grab the Bayou. Suspend guy's will. We'll pass. Our opponent cycles a troll. They grab another basic swamp. What? You're running double basic swamp? Killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. We drew a volcanic island. That's not so bad. Play the volcanic. And we'll pass the turn. Our opponent plays an underground sea into ponder. Okay. They did not shuffle. And they play a powder keg. Yeah, you got it. So that's going to look to kill my carpet of flowers in a turn. Guys, will loose as a counter down to two. We draw a bloodstained mire. Make a green. Let's attempt a veil of summer. They have to counter this. I mean, if they don't, they're dead. So the force of will exiling a Lorien revealed. They have four cards left in hand. We will fetch down to 17. Let's grab a bad lands. We don't really need blue mana. And then we'll just Galvanic Relay for value. Three cards. You could play out the Lion's Eye Diamonds into the Powder Keg. I don't really feel like that's worth it. So I'd rather hang on to these. And it looks like they have a Fluster Storm here. They have four cards. And they do have a Fluster. Okay. So our Galvanic Relay will be countered, even if it was a sad three card Galvanic Relay. But the our bright side, our opponent only has three cards in hand. They didn't use... Oh no, my bad, it's Powder Keg. I forget, Powder Keg adds a counter in the upkeep. But they didn't add a counter here. It's pretty interesting. Hardcast Grief, what are you doing? They play Ponder. Looted Delta, they have three cards in hand. They grab another Underground Sea. Now they Hardcast Grief. They have two cards left. They take a Burning Wish. Guy's Will goes down to one counter now. We'll draw. The Rite of Flame. We'll make red mana. We'll play the Burning Wish. And they decide to force it, pitching a Murktide Regent. All right, well, our opponent just said, hey, I'm going to draw a spell here because this guy's will is coming off suspend on our turn. So they have to draw a card right now. It's another grief. I believe that we just won. Did our opponent forget about guy's will? Who even needs Beseech the Mirror? I mean, guy's will, five turns, sign me up. Am I right? Holy moly. They discard the Rite of Flame. We'll take three. They're at 15. This should be easy. We will cast Guy's Will. The old-fashioned way. And then we'll go to our draw step. And it's a Dark Ritual. Let's make some black mana. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. We'll make red. Bla we can do more red, I guess. Right of Flame. Replay the Taiga. Cast Burning Wish. We'll grab Tendrils of Agony, cast Burning Wish, we'll pick up Grape Shot, Shots, Storm 8, and actually let's kill Grief. I mean, we're here, we might as well. Alright, so Grief 1 dies, Grief 2 will now die, and then we can resolve this Tendrils of Agony. Sweet, that was match number 1 over Demir Scam.
and we're one and all we didn't really use song of creation or beseech the mirror this round but the rest of the got deck got the job done and that's really all that matters so i will see you in the second match don't go anywhere Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Welcome to the second match. We're on the draw. We're going to keep this hand. Our opponent's last result was the Demir Scam deck that we just faced. So I'm really inclined to keep hands with Double Veil of Summer against that deck. If they're still on it, who knows, but that's what we're going to assume for now. And we see a Tremont Scalding Tarn. Play the Volcanic. We can then play Lion's Eye Diamonds to enable the Metal Craft on this Mox Opal. And something that I meant to mention over the deck tech was that the idea for Song of Creation was not my own. Uh, so if you are a follower of this channel, you would have seen that Jordan Kareem streamed a Song of Creation deck. That was inspired by Magic Online user screenwriter NY, which I assume is New York. And that person played Song of Creation to a top 32 finish in a Legacy Challenge. Once we saw that, we started testing Song of Creation in this deck. So the credit really should go to screenwriter NY. All right, so it's not the Demir uh, scam deck. It's probably Grixis Delver, but who knows? We'll just pass the turn here. We see a brainstorm. Basic Island. Is this like Sneak and Show? Like, this seems like a very loose Delver start. Play the Underground Sea. We'll pass. I mean, this fetch should tell us. If it's an Underground Sea, it's probably a Delver variant. And if it's another Volcanic Island, it's probably Sneak and Show. If it's Tropical Island, it's the Rug Delver deck that's been floating around with Questing Druid. But I'm struggling to believe that this is a tempo deck based on how this start has looked. Okay, it was a Tropical. I guess it could still be Sneak and Show because a bunch of those have a main deck Veil of Summer now, but the start just doesn't make sense unless it's like nothing but counter magic. Play another Bloodstained Mire, we will pass. Do, 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 do. All right, pass the turn. Show your four color control. That makes the most sense of out of anything we've seen so far. All right, ley line binding. They're going to take a lion's eye diamond. Oh no, galvanic relay. I would really appreciate it if you were on top of my deck right now. They play an uro holding open savannah. So I have to imagine they have another ley line binding. And that's why you would choose to leave open savannah. We draw a Lotus Petal, we will pass. And there's another Ley Line Binding. Who could have imagined that? So they've taken two Lion's Eye Diamonds, but I honestly don't care about that. Like, it's just like not very relevant. We are just waiting to draw a Beseech the Mirror, a Burning Wish, a Galvanic Relay. I'd love a Brainstorm. Fourth Air Lingus for two. One has four cards. Am I supposed to cycle a Veil of Summer here? They're about to draw up to five. I mean, maybe I'm supposed to cycle a Veil. We'll grab Bayou. Cycle the Veil of Summer because they cast a Ponder this turn. We draw a Mishra's Bobble. And now they'll draw off becoming the Monarch. We draw a Chrome Mox. Not ideal. We're 25% of the way through our deck, and we are struggling to find payoffs. They're about to draw a Brainstorm. We have seven cards in hand, so we can pass the turn here. But even if I were to draw a Burning Wish, I'm starting to become a little bit nervous that the one Veil of Summer we have just isn't good enough anymore. We waited too long. So if we want to win this game, I think the top card, like, realistically needs to be Galvanic Relay. And they play the Known Brainstorm. They fetch. So they could get a Mystic Sanctuary for Fourth Aerolingas here. They grab a Tropical Island, okay. And they're just going to pass. They have six cards. Jack, you are killing me. Oh my. Okay, we're just going to play out some cards. We will pass. So two more cards would be 33% of our deck, and we've seen a single Mishra's Bobble. It's uh, not mathematically likely, but sometimes that's how magic works. We will fall to seven life here. Our opponent plays an Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath, and they're going up to 23 life. 
They put a Mystic Sanctuary into play for fourth Aerolingas. And they didn't put it on top. They, I don't know if that was intentional or not. So they drew up to seven. This is our last turn. We drew another Chrome Mox. Okay, so we lose game number one. Our deck kind of betrayed us there. Unfortunate. So against control decks, I do like boarding out the Mox Opals and the Chrome Moxen. And then we'll bring in Carpets and Abrupt Decays. We know that our opponent's a Leyline Binding deck, but I still think that those cards are more effective than like a one-time Mox Opal or Chrome Mox or whatever. So we'll try this out. The upside of Carpet making more mana is just so much higher in my opinion. Let's turn it around. We're on the play for game number two. Wow, a hand with action spells. Keep. That's crazy. I can't believe that the deck would do that. We're just going to lead on this Bloodstain Mire and pass the turn. There's no point in playing out Carpet of Flowers versus a control deck. We want them to play out their islands. And by just showing Carpet early, they can play around it. You might be saying, Bryant, you did that in game number one. I think the real difference there is that we weren't trying to play around like Days or Wasteland or anything like that out of the uh, control decks, where you are doing that versus tempo decks. And they naturally have a Savannah. Okay. We'll just take a draw here. Another Veil of Summer. I'm going to pass. I could have brainstormed there looking for another land, but I don't want them to search out a Volcanic Island and blast me. And they wait to play a Beanstalk. I think I'm now going to respond with a Brainstorm. And that result, another Beseech and a, another Lotus Petal, a third Veil of Summer. I don't know how I feel about the third Veil. Our opponent has six cards. I think I'm going to fetch away the third Veil of Summer. Let's grab Taiga, draw for turn. Love that. So I could try to get them with the Veil of Summer here and see if they'll respond. But if I don't, it's going to look pretty foolish because I can't win. I'm going to play one carpet. And they're going to force it, really. Let's respond and try to Veil. They grab a Volcanic. And they're going to brainstorm in response. Veil of Summer draws another carpet. I think we can win. Carpet happens. Let's play Lotus Petal. Now we'll play another carpet. Firm is six. We'll switch phases. We'll do black and green. We'll play the carpet as spell number seven. And then we can chain beseech the mirrors into tendrils of agony. So now we'll grab another Beseech. This is going to be Storm 9. And then Storm 10, Tendrils of Agony. One more just for good luck. Like, we technically didn't need a chain there, but I wanted to. And that's going to be game number two. All right, so now we're going to game number three. I don't think I want to change any of my boarding. We're just going to resubmit. Third game of the second match, we will keep. I believe that I'm likely just going to suspend Guy's Will on the first turn. They play a Ponder. They shuffle down the Ponder. We draw a Dark Ritual. It's not a bad one. Yeah, I think I'm going to suspend the guy's will. I want the guy's will to be active faster. My concern is that I'm holding a Brainstorm and I don't have a Shuffle effect. They play a Taiga. Up the Beanstalk. You've got it. Guy's will loses a Suspend Counter. We draw another Veil of Summer. I think I'm going to play the uh, Brainstorm. If I miss, it's going to stink, but we do have the guy as well coming off Suspend. Luckily, we draw the, the Galvanic Relay. Let's get rid of this Rite of Flame, and we'll put a Dark Ritual on top. When it plays their own copy of Brainstorm. Scalding Tarn for a Tropical Island, and another up the Beanstalk. So they draw another card. So anything that costs five mana now draws them two cards. Not a bad way to live. Guy's Will goes to two counters. And I'm going to attempt a carpet here. That resolves. We'll make double green. Dark Ritual. Let's attempt a Veil of Summer and see if they respond. They cast four. So by playing Force Will, they get to draw two cards here. I'm going to attempt another Veil. We draw Brainstorm. They now get to draw two cards. Up to six. Best Force of Will of all time. We'll draw a card off this Veil of Summer. I was really hoping for uh, a Beseech there. And then we will Galvanic Relay for six. 
Mishra's Bobble, Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal, Beseech, Mishra's Bobble, Beseech. So, I mean, that was pretty good in its own right. Our opponent now has seven cards in hand. So if they have a Leyline Binding, it draws two cards here. And it looks like they do. Yeah, I mean, Up the Beanstalk is a very powerful card. And they play a Savannah. This uh, guy as well goes down to one counter. We draw a Lion's Eye Diamond. I think I want to start on a Brainstorm. Okay, not bad. We do have double Beseech and Exile, so I don't think we need this Beseech. But I think we can get rid of the Dark Ritual. We'll play a Bloodstained Mire. They have seven cards. That's a lot. We will fetch. We'll grab the Badlands. Let's attempt a Burning Wish. Storm is two. Grab Thoughtseize. We'll cast it targeting them. They have a Veil of Summer. Brutal. Okay, so it's now or never. We'll try the Lion's Eye Diamond from Exile to see if they'll force this. They did not. Lotus Petal. Try another Lion's Eye Diamond. And another Lion's Eye Diamond. When it's less seven cards, that's so terrifying. We will attempt a Beseech the Mirror, Storm 9. They have another Force. They'll draw two. Play a Bobble. Add three black. Let's try another Beseech floating one. Okay, so real question. Am I supposed to get Song of Creation here and go all in on this Mishra's Bobble? Or do I take a gigantic Galvanic Relay? I think the answer is the gigantic Galvanic Relay. If I had... I don't know. I guess I could have played the Bobble first, but it took away the option of getting Song. Our opponent has seven cards in hand. Still, I... These beanstalks have been so good. We flip the Abrupt Decay, which is pretty good for us. And then the Song of Creation. We'll play the Bobble. Just target them immediately. Surgical Extraction. Okay. We draw a Beseech. They know that we have one in Exile and there's two in the Graveyard. So if they Surgical the Beseech, they would get the last copy, the fourth copy, out of my hand. They play an Island. Hard cast Lorien revealed. I love it. So they just drew five mana for five cards for five mana. Better than tidings. They surgical the Lion's Eye Diamond. Sure. They're going to clean up. They discard a couple lands and an Uro. We'll put this over here. So Gaia's Will is now coming off suspend. Right on time. Right after a big turn, which is exactly how you want to set this card up. It resolved? No. What? That feels made up. You just have nothing opponent? I mean, I want to thought seize them. I, I have to know. And they just concede. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Um, They just drew so many cards and didn't get there. I'll take a match win, though. We are now 2 and out with the Epic Storm version 15.1. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. All right, we are back for the third match. We're facing Pekachu, and they're someone who tends to play a lot of the blue tempo decks. So this hand is pretty good. We do need a dark ritual. And honestly, Volcanic Island's a little awkward here because we have Veil of Summer plus Beseech the Mirror. But I think that this hand is a keep, and we're just going to see how it plays out. I've faced this person once on Black Red Reanimator, but it's usually, and I say usually because you never really know, blue tempo decks. Lion's Eye Diamond. Max Opal. Let's play a Mishra's Bobble. And let's look at their top guard. Edge of Autumn. So today it's Doomsday. We really want that Dark Ritual. Another Mishra's Bobble. Misty Rainforest. Underground Sea. Into Ponder. You got it. They shuffled. They play their Lotus Petal. We know that they have an Edge of Autumn. The land isn't the worst. I will certainly take that. We'll play our Bobble and let's pass the turn. So now another land could theoretically win it for us. They play a Brainstorm. 
included Delta, Duress. I will attempt a Veil of Summer. Burning Wish is a good one. All right, we will now use the Bobble on ourselves. Another land. Is that even good? So if I keep a land, think of three lands, cast Burning Wish into Thoughtseize. I'm still two mana away from Beseech the Mirror. I think I'm going to fetch that away. And we'll grab Bayou. So now we get two random draws here. Draw another Mox Opal and Brainstorm. Let's start on the Brainstorm. Yikes. Okay. So if I put back from Mox... No, there's no way I can do it here. I'm just, I end up one card short. But I think we're supposed to hide the Beseech on top. We'll play Rite of Flame. Burning Wish. That resolved. So I could get Galvanic Relay. But if they kill me, obviously that's not great. We know that they have an Edge of Autumn. So if all they need in hand is a Doomsday. But I think you're supposed to get the Thoughtseize. We'll play another Opal. So this way we can play through days. And let's attempt the Thoughtseize. They have nothing. Okay then, I guess we'll take Consider. Please don't kill me, opponent. They play the Tropical Island. So they have their draw step plus one unknown card off of the Edge of Autumn. We'll play the other Opal. We need our opponent to just have nothing here. We know that our top card is a Chrome Mox as well. Cast Beseech, sacrificing Mox Opal. They cycle the Edge of Autumn, sacrificing the Tropical Island. Looks good from here. We'll hold priority on this guy as well. Let's make three black. And they concede. Whew. Got lucky there. I feel like our opponent didn't have the best draw. I don't think you're actually supposed to board at all for this matchup, so I'm just going to re-click Submit. We also really haven't had a great opportunity for this Song of Creation. I mean, I know that this is supposed to be the Song of Creation video, but we just haven't had the chance yet. I promise it's actually very good. So I've played, before recording tonight, before recording at all, I've played 25 matches with this list. My win rate is 64%. And usually I have like three song wins per league. And tonight it just like hasn't happened. Mostly I think because we're facing a lot of the blue decks of the format. Where my, the leagues the last few nights have been really wild. Like I was actually kind of hesitant to record before tonight. Because like a league I played earlier this week. And you can choose not to believe me. Alright so it was first Black Prison with multiple Mind Break Traps in the sideboard. Red Black Reanimator with Silences. And you're probably thinking like, eh, I've seen that before, sure. But they also had Rurik Thar in their deck. What? Why are you playing Rurik Thar and Silences? Like Storm is like four to 5% of the metagame. It, it blows my mind. And then on top of that, in the fifth and final round, I got paired against Cephalid Breakfast featuring Thalia Guardian of Thraben. And I don't know like why Cephalid Breakfast of all decks would want that, but I mean, leagues are crazy right now. And to say this is I still haven't finished worse than three and two in a league. That league I just described to you, I three two'd. And I don't know, it speaks to the strength of Beseech the Mirror, in my opinion, because those old ad nauseum lists that you we've been playing for years would have never have three two'd that league. And Beseech the Mirror's just been carrying me, so I'm pretty thankful. Our opponent has kept seven. Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual. I appear to be dead. Doomsday. So they have Flusterstorm in the deck. They have Abundant Growth. So they're on Beseech the Mirror, and here it is. I don't think Abundant Growth is really where you want to be, but, I mean, props to them for trying out Beseech. I do like that. They cycle Street Wraith, and I'm dead. Turn one. Yep. They make three blue, so... I am not seeing Force and Negation. I am seeing a number of Flusterstorms, though. So they only have four Force of Will. Oh no, here's one Force of Negation. They have one Force of Negation. Okay. They have five Forces. I mean, nothing I can do about that game. Let's resubmit. Game number three, we're on the play. So we have Song. But, I mean, I could play Song on turn one. It's sort of an all-in play. But if it resolves, we're in decent shape. I'll keep it. I mean, I have this Veil of Summer too. So we could go Chromox, Rite of Flame, Lotus Petal Song, with our only card being Veil of Summer, and then we'd have to discard the Veil of Summer next turn. I think I'm going to pass. Dark Ritual from the opponent, okay. 
And Doomsday, are you going to turn one me again? So they're f all four of their Force of Wills are in exile, and so is their Force of Negation. So they might just have a cycler into a win here. And it appears I'm being turned one twice. Wow. Sometimes you lose. I mean, props to the opponent. I mean, they just opened up back-to-back -back turn ones. If I had played Song on the first turn, I could not have won because I didn't have another spell to play. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we are now 2-1 and one, losing to Doomsday. What a match, really. Okay, still two rounds left. Let's try to win those. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Round four, we're on the draw, and I'm going to keep a pretty questionable hand. Our opponent is playing, well, they typically play black-green depths. I don't know if that's what they're playing tonight. Once again, who knows? But I do like a hand with multiple Veil Summers quite a lot in that matchup. We also obviously have Beseech the Mirror for turn one potential. Well, okay, maybe I'm just dying. They Thought sees me. They have four cards remaining in hand. Shame on me for losing the die roll. They take Chrome Mox, okay. They cycle a troll. Is your last card going to be a reanimate? I guess they still have two available mana here. Is an anime dead? Alright, so it's not depths, but I mean this was a very good turn one. They have two cards left in hand. We draw another Beseech the Mirror. Let's see what they're drawing. Ancient Tomb. So they're probably the Black Prison deck. We'll draw off Bobble. I mean, the Black Prison deck doesn't play Anime Dead, I don't think. Galvanic Relay. Yikes. So our first two draws have not been ideal. We'll take five. We fall down to 15 life. They have an Ancient Tomb and two other cards. And I can't but feel that they're holding open an Opposition Agent here. Guy as well. Ay ay ay. We'll play a Brainstorm. I will be Bowmastered. Does that kill me? If I take four here... It puts me to 11. I think this is 10 damage, but that's not going to do it. So we're dead. Okay. I mean, I could have kept a hand, a different hand, so I'm not going to complain too much, but they did have a pretty strong opener. What to do now? I do like the bounce spells against uh, the Black Prison decks. I don't like Abrupt Decay as much. It's pretty much only good versus Bowmaster and Opposition Agent. And with Opposition Agent, I mean, both creatures, actually, they just have Flash. So I don't really love the Abrupt Decay. I'm going to board down on two relays. This is a matchup that I think Song of Creation actually shines. Ooh, I don't know why I was hovering there. I think that this is a match where this card shines quite a bit. Game number two. Let's try to do better. Uh, I think you're supposed to send this back. This is better. We'll get rid of the Rite of Flame. So we'll play the Bloodstained Mire, Mishra's Bobble. I mean, I don't know if they're a Wasteland deck, but I'm going to Bobble here. We'll fetch, go we'll grab a Taiga, and pass. Like, I don't know if you're allowed to play Wasteland in your Ancient Tomb deck, but who knows. Another land. They play a Lotus Petal, and they're passing. We draw another Mox Opal. After we shuffled one away, we'll play a Bloodstemire. In Tomb. Okay, so I guess it's just like Mono Black Reanimator and maybe not the Black Prison deck. They pick up an Atroxa. And Animate Dead on the Atroxa. Sparkish Bowmasters, Animate Dead, Reanimate, Thoughtseize, Shadow Spear. So they must be an Urza Saga deck as well. Off the Atroxa, our opponent selected Orcish Bowmasters, Dark Ritual, Lotus Petal, Swamp, Animate Dead, and Thoughtseize. So they picked up six cards. It's uh, quite the Atroxa. They play Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual. They're going to Thought Seize me. So I will cycle Veil of Summer and then they're going to respond with Orcish Bowmasters. Yep. And then another Orcish Bowmasters. Okay. Brutal. I really need to draw into something good. And if that's the case, maybe I should fetch first to reduce my chance of drawing a land. I'll grab Volcanic here in case I draw into Brainstorm. Because, or I guess, if I draw Brainstorm, I probably don't even want to cast it. Because waiting a turn, waiting until my turn would give me a card deeper. I hope I don't draw brainstorm now. I mean, I do, but I don't. 
We're back to Veil of Summer. It resolves and we draw the brainstorm. <laughs> oh, magic is a funny game. So I think I'm supposed to hold the brainstorm in all seriousness. I don't think the six damage off of the Bowmasters matters. Uh, because right now this Bowmasters is about to become a... I'm sorry, the Orc army is about to become a four power. So our opponent's going to have 12 damage. And then if I brainstorm, this thing's going to get big enough to kill me anyway. So I might as well untap and see an extra card. Come on, deck, please give me a Beseech the Mirror. The Alvanic Relay is not good enough here. We'll cast the Brainstorm. That's actually really interesting. Holy moly. So, what am I supposed to do? I need to put two back. I think I might be dead. So I could Veil to stop the triggers from targeting me. Yeah, I don't think there's a way out of this. I needed to draw better off the Brainstorm. Because the Orc army is going to grow. And then I'm stuck with one mana source. I can't cast the Echoing Truth. And I'm dead on board. And some of you might be saying like, Oh, well, Bryant, you could Brainstorm into the Echoing Truth. So you could Veil here, put Echoing Truth on top, and then Brainstorm into the Echoing Truth, sacrificing your hand. What am I doing the rest of the game if I do that? A lot of people leave comments like that, but I feel like that's playing not to die, but you're just accepting you're not going to win the game anyway. So uh, not a real line, in my opinion. Well, we definitely don't need the opal. So like I could veil and then like brainstorm into relay, but I'm just dead on board to a 10 power orc army plus everything else. I guess what I could do is I could pray that the third card down is beseech the mirror. Okay, that's the out. All right, so that is the winning line. The The third card down on our next Brainstorm has to be Beseech the Mirror. All right, so we're going to take six here, going down to ten life. We'll play the Underground Sea, play the Mox Opal, play Lion's Eye Diamond. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hold priority on this Brainstorm, and then we will sacrifice the Lion's Eye Diamond for three black. Let's see it. We missed. All right, so I feel like our deck kind of let us down this match. The previous round, getting turn one by the Force of Will deck twice, that's not a loss that I feel like ultimately I had a whole lot of control over. Here in game number one, I could have mulliganed, so that's sort of on me, but then again, our draw steps, we had three of them that game, I believe, were just terrible. And then here in game two, we never found a payoff. We also had a some struggles in match number two versus the control deck with finding a payoff. So a little bit odd, uh, if I'm being honest, but we're going to try to win match number five and just stay positive. So I will see you in the fifth match. Don't go anywhere. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Alright, let's get this and finish with a positive record. So this is a turn 1 win, I believe. We... Imprint the relay, beseech, put guys will on the stack, replay the chrome mox. We're actually a mana short, so we could put the song of creation into play on turn one, but I don't think that's that amazing. So I think actually what I'm going to do is just turn one galvanic relay for a bunch. Our opponent is mulligan to six. Like I mentioned, we're just going to play turn one galvanic relay here. We add a lotus petal, and then we'll play another lotus petal. We'll use the Misty Rainforest, we will search out an Underground Sea, and then we'll cast Galvanic Relay. Storm is four. Two lands, a Beseech the Mirror, and a Veil of Summer. Looks like we're facing lands. They then play a Wasteland. Okay. Exploration. Dark Depths. Dark Ritual. Ding! Love it. Okay, so we'll play the Verdant. I... I mean, this might just be a win. Dark Ritual. We'll cast with Bargain, sacrificing the Chrome Mox. So if I get the Guy's Will, yeah, they're just dead to a Guy's Will line. The one matchup that Song is really good and our opponent tapped out. So we will cast the Guy's Will, holding priority. We'll sacrifice Lotus Petal for Black. Replay the Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual. Replay the Chrome Mox. And our opponent's just going to concede. 
So we have won game number one. Now we're going to post board. I like just taking out the Valus numbers. They have no application in the matchup. Bring in Echoing Truth, Abrupt Decays, and the Consign to Oblivion. All right, game number two, we're on the draw, and I'm going to keep this, which seems a little bit odd because it's a slow hand against lands. They're a deck that is looking to accelerate into Sphere of Resistance against us, and having the Abrupt Decay, I think it's just very valuable. Another Dark Ritual. I'm going to play out this Mishra's Bobble and just look to cycle it. I don't even want to look at the top card of my deck because no matter what, I'm not going to fetch with this Misty Rainforest. We can't afford to get our lands destroyed here. So I'd rather just get a little information out of our opponent and then, you know, draw some card that I can maybe put back later on the Brainstorm. Another land. Our opponent plays an Exploration and a Thespian Stage. A Wasteland. And there's the turn two Sphere Resistance. They still have three cards in hand. We draw a Bobble. We're just going to play a land and pass. We really need to hope that they don't have Dark Depths. Because if they have Dark Depths here, we, we've likely lost. Because we can't win and destroy this Sphere in one turn. They're going to destroy my Misty. Let's activate. Grab Underground Sea. That tells me that they likely have either Life from the Loam or another Wasteland. And it looks like it's Life from the Loam. Okay, this might be tough to get out of. So we can play another Fetch Land here. But every turn now, I believe they can... No, they would need another waste. So I think I actually do have an opening here to destroy this sphere. Our opponent plays another exploration. Wooded foothills. Interesting, they're just passing. We draw chrome Mox. We're just going to play the volcanic. We'll pass the turn. Our opponent fetches and they grab a savannah. We know that they have a life from the loam in hand and they dredge again. Milling another life from the loam. Wasteland and Urza Saga. So they can pick up double Wasteland here. Okay, so n we have to destroy this artifact now. We'll grab Bayou and Badlands. This way, if I draw a Beseech, we can still cast it. Tap the Bayou for green and the Badlands for black. We will destroy the artifact. They play the other Wasteland. So I'm shut off from casting the Brainstorm. Because I don't have a blue land. I didn't have a blue land in my deck to fetch. So without like a Mox Opal or drawing another blue card, I can't cast it. Badlands has been destroyed. They play an Urza Saga with two cards left in their hand. Make a draw. There's a Beseech. So we can win here. The downside is do we play around Force of Vigor or do we play around Crop Rotation into Bajooka Bog? I think they're more likely to have Graveyard Hate than Force of Vigor. So we're going to go get Song of Creation. It's finally happening. It only took until the very end of the league. Song of Creation. Our opponent's reading this card right now saying like, why are you playing this like four mana enchantment when I'm holding Graveyard Hate? All right, so it looks like Song of Creation is one. We'll play Mishra's Bobble and we'll draw two. Okay, and we drew a Mox Opal. So I think we're actually going to get to do the thing here. Lion's Eye Diamond. We drew the guy's will. So that was a bad two, but I mean, we still have some fuel here. Storm count is eight. We'll play a Lion's Eye Diamond. Easy. Cool thing about Song of Creation, by the way, you can play additional lands. So I don't believe we have any, but if we were to like Echo of Aeons or somehow Gaia's will, we could play another land this turn. Let's cast the consign on our Mox Opal. So this is going to draw two. And then we can replay the Mox Opal and draw two. Nice. And a little bit clunky there. Let's bobble ourselves and see what our top card is. It's a land. I will brainstorm. I could sacrifice the LEDs in response. I think that's kind of risky. We'll just click and put back two random cards here. Play the Lotus Petal. We'll play Lion's Eye Diamond. Fun fact, if you ever feel like you're going to die to your own Song of Creation decking you, you can always sacrifice it to the Beseech the Mirror. And when you sacrifice it as part of the bargain cost, you do not draw two. The more you know. Cast Rite of Flame. And now we can play a Dark Ritual. 
play this Lotus Petal. And at this point, I think we just have to play around Veil of Summer, and that's all I'm doing. We'll play another Lotus Petal that's from 19. We'll play Burning Wish. 11 cards left in our deck. Yes. Grab the Grape Shot, and we'll cast it. From 21. Drawing down to 9 cards left in deck. Our opponent just told me that they had crop rotation into Bajooka Bog. But we managed to get through it using Song of Creation. Alright, so we got the showcase song out in one match. I'm a little disappointed we we didn't get to do it more. But ultimately, I don't control the games and how they all play out. Uh, I wish we could have done it more, but we got a glimpse at how good Song of Creation is. So we finished this with a 3-2, and two, which isn't anything spectacular. But I really do believe that Song of Creation is the way forward. I know we only used it once this league. I think our matches were also a little bit odd. Um, but we don't like mono black reanimator, Tiki Dan, super nice opponent, but like mono black reanimator, uh, plus like Bowmasters isn't like a metagame deck. I mean, there is the black prison deck, which is sort of similar, but pr still pretty different. Uh, our deck kind of failed us two games throughout the league. I don't know, but I really like this list. I've been playing it a bunch. This league brought me up to 30 matches with this 75. And I'm pretty convinced that Song of Creation is the way forward. And some of you re were really excited to see Ponder come back. I still think that Mishra's Bobble's probably where you want to be. I mean, just having your Opals actually tap for mana is pretty good instead of them just being this awkward artifact that you sacrifice to Besiege. So I've rambled long enough. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of Song of Creation in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and keep storming. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. If you're looking for more sweet combo content, we have tons of it over at theepicstorm.com where you can find matchup guides, play-by-play, -play, and storm puzzles featuring a monthly combo expert. You're going to love what we have over there.